Hey, look, it's Raspberry Pi 5. A cool seven inch touchscreen that's gonna go with it. A weatherproof Apache box. What am I getting myself into? I have no idea. Okay, so let's start with the little monitor first. This is a seven inch LCD display Resolution 1024 by 600. It comes with a few bits that you're gonna need when you start putting it together, which I'll show you. But the monitor itself, this is gonna be like the key component of the device. I'm gonna mount this inside of the Apache box. And the Raspberry Pi is gonna mount right back here on these four screws. So this little guy is just gonna basically sit right there. With this monitor, you're gonna get some little pegs that you can use for legs. So if you're not mounting it, you can basically hook these in. They go like that. And then it can, actually they go like that. And then it would give you support legs if that's what you want. It comes with, uh, looks like a USB or an HDMI. It looks like HDMI adapter here. And the various screws you will need to mount things. And uh, I've already plugged up the big HDMI output cable. And then I have this, which is the actual power for the device plugged in. So those are gonna be my primary two cables. Now, now what are my use cases for this? I'm gonna be putting all of this inside one of these Apache boxes. And this little box I can shut, it's weatherproof, and I can have a battery block in here that could be powering everything. The point of this is twofold. One, I wanna learn Raspberry Pi 5, and this is a good use case to do it. Two, if I get this hooked up and it's self-contained, I can run a streaming webcam off of it for car shows. I could also use this to power a bigger display for events that I go to. And I just think kind of having it in this box would give me the ruggability of what I intend to do with the device. Now we'll get to the mounting of the device soon. We want to just unpackage this monitor and get the Raspberry Pi set up. It's this technology just amazes me. A little tiny computer. Look at that. You have an Ethernet cable. You have USB, a bunch of USB ports. And this is literally just going to mount just like so on this device. Ah, I'm gonna need to use these little standoffs. I should have paid more attention. So in the uh, in the screen box, it comes with these guys, which are gonna go in here. And this is gonna allow that screen to sit a little bit higher. You gotta pop off this cover on here though. The screw holes here, so you can just kind of pull that right off. So with the tape removed, then you can take the, the standoffs here, a little tape there, and uh, these are just gonna screw in there, and that's gonna give you enough clearance to mount the board. So with the standoffs in, I don't have that perceived issue I was talking about before, right? Everything is just gonna align. I imagine I'm actually wanna go this way. This is gonna come out farther than I than I expected. Like the depth of it is definitely gonna be more, it looks like it's gonna be about two inches, roughly, a little less, probably an inch and a half. Just kind of giving it a quick measure that you gotta account for it. That's okay, I have the depth in the box. I just, I guess you kind of need that though because there's buttons here that you'll be pushing. So they give you a little screwdriver that you can use to hook the, uh, the Pi board in. So you're gonna wanna just do that at each of the four corners. So this is the screen with the Pi mounted. You can see the depth I'm talking about. I might end up just putting it on its legs down here and just letting it sit like this in the box. That might ultimately be what I end up doing. So I am gonna use the little legs that came with it. So the legs, this is just a protective covering on each side, but the legs will ultimately go on just like this. And it will kind of rest like that. You can take the leg, you can take the little screwdriver they give you, and you can basically 
screw it right down onto the board. And you can just take this and pull off. This is just the uh, protecting that little acrylic shiny. It's kind of shiny. So you can see how it's a little more of a glossy finish on that leg. Do that for, for all of them. You do need to use this adapter that they give. Again, adding a little more thickness and it's gonna go right there, which is for HDMI. This cable I have is way too long. I'm gonna have to get a shorter cable, but this is how you can actually output, you know, effectively HDMI into the HDMI port on the screen. Okay, looking at this, I see one thing that I, that I need to change. This board needs to be mounted differently because I do not want that HDMI adapter going up past the actual board. So I've taken it out, but I'm gonna now put it on this way. So that way it's not so much protruding up past the board. It's kind of tight with your power and HDMI cables here, so I do have mine plugged in now. Okay, so I have it switched up. No change to the front, but the big change is this HDMI cable here. It's going to plug in, and I clearly need to get a smaller HDMI cable. I wish... I wish this port adapter wasn't so darn big because you can already see like the issue you're going to have with these big old cables. So I need to get a smaller HDMI cable because I don't see how on earth this can sit. So you're learning with me. I initially had the power going into the display. I need to put the power into the high board. You can see the high board has lit up. Yes, you do need to power the screen. The good news is the screen can be powered off of a USB port on a Raspberry Pi. So I have another little USB-C cable. I just happen to have this in my box of cables. So I'm going to have to go into the side here. I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to need to power off of the board so the only thing plugging into an outlet per se is the board so then i can take my power cable here and i can put into the back of this board you can see i clearly need to get some better ca better cables these are too long the board lights up I can press the power button on the screen. Nope, I inadvertently hit it. And you can see Raspberry Pi is now, in fact, booting up. All right, so that, my friends, is step one of this project. This is using the EOA Raspberry Pi 7-inch screen. I'm using the Raspberry Pi board. And you can see, this is what, what you need to consider. It comes with these little legs. Get an idea of the depth. You need to power the screen. I'm powering that off of the Pi board, USB-C into the screen. This HDMI cable that's coming out of the Pi, that's coming out of the screen, will go up to this HDMI mini adapter into the Pi board. And then I'm powering off of a standard outlet USB-C for the board. This screen is going to work with Raspberry Pi 5, 4, 3, 2, and 0. It's a mini 7-inch screen. It's only $42 on Amazon. It gives you audio outputs also. So under here you have audio speaker right here. So you can plug in a port and have audio, which is awesome. This is my crude initial install of how everything is going to initial look. Follow along because I'm going to begin to get this mounted and Raspberry Pi queued up into this actual Apache box. So that, my friends, is how I'm going to be converting this Apache box 
with a seven inch Raspberry Pi screen for my projects. This is step one, just getting the monitor hooked up and the board mounted. Step two is gonna be configuring a Raspberry Pi with a little memory stick. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then step three is gonna be mounting it in the box. And then step four is gonna be how I'm actually using it. But if you're looking for a seven inch screen, this could be exactly what you're looking for. 49 bucks. Step one is done of this DIY build. Thanks for watching. Subscribe because you don't want to miss step two, three, and four building upon the monitor.